So hello everyone, I'm just checking that you can hear me. Um, greetings to everyone who's here from all around the world. Um, just a quick reminder, we have attendees today from across the world, from Brazil through to Cyprus, from Greece, Israel and Japan, from Poland as well, uh, right through to across the US and UK and Tr Trinidad. So welcome to everyone as you come back today. Um, it's just a great reminder of that we're all better and stronger when we're all together and together we can move forward. Um, my name is Diana Jupp and I'm the Chief Exec of Pancreatic Cancer UK and the co-chair of the World Pancreatic Cancer Annual Meeting Committee. Um, so thank you. Um, we've got a great day um, in store for us ahead of us or an evening for those of us who are in Europe um, in which we can drive transformational uh, change for everyone who's been affected by pancreatic cancer. So we've just had the um, round table sessions and many of you were there and um, they've just wrapped up and I hope you found the conversations really interesting um, and as powerful as yesterday. And um, today, later on, we're going to uh, get a preview of the 2021 World Pancreatic Cancer Day campaign and a presentation as well of yesterday's regional Zoom breakout conversations, including all of your big ideas. I'm fascinated to see whether we've come up with the same ideas across the world. Um, but to get us started today, we have a very special guest that I'm excited to introduce. Bryony Thomas is going to share her pancreatic cancer survivor story. Bryony was 41 years old when she was diagnosed just 19 months ago. And then since then, Bryony has been a fantastic advocate, sharing her story, representing the voice of people with pancreatic cancer to senior decision makers in government, in the NHS here in the UK, and also with the media. But beyond all of that, she's also a mum to a fabulous nine-year-old daughter, is a businesswoman and a best-selling author. So let's all please welcome Bryony Thomas. Thank you, Diana. On the 19th of April, 1983, I was five years old and I was tucked up in bed and there was a knock at the door in the early hours of the morning. It was two local police officers and they had arrived to tell my father that our mother had died. We weren't living with her at the time and so we didn't know. When my sister and I got up in the morning, we didn't know that our world had changed. My dad made us breakfast, took us to school, and we didn't know. He took the day to gather his thoughts and to find the words. The words that once had been said could never be unsaid. The words that you never forget. On the 19th of December, 2019, I was 41 and I was tucked up in bed. And there was a knock at the door of the hospital room that I had been in for the previous four days, having investigations for unexplained jaundice. In came Dr Griffiths, two women I didn't recognise, one of whom was wearing a purple uniform, and my husband. And Dr Griffiths found the words, we found a mass in your pancreas, we think it's cancer it might be operable. Words once said that can't be unsaid and the words once said can never be forgotten. As a pancreatic cancer patient, there are other words that we never forget. With my diagnosis, half die within 12 weeks. I wasn't going to see the book that I'd worked on for the past four years published. 77% die within one year. This was going to be my last Christmas with our eight-year-old daughter. 93% die within five years. The business venture that I'd poured my heart and soul and all of my life savings into 
was never going to see fruition. 1% make it to 10 years. I was never going to see my daughter make 18. My husband went home and he put her to bed and she didn't know. And when her dad made her breakfast and took her to school, she didn't know. We took the day to gather our thoughts, to find the words, to tell her that her world had changed. Words that once said can never be unsaid. Words that once said will never be forgotten. We told her that mummy had cancer. And her question, of course, was, are you going to die? I couldn't lie. I said, yes, my darling, I might. I might. But I was the lucky one. The one in 10 that gets the chance of living. I did see my book published. I've had businesses since then with my daughter. My business is going well and I have every intention of seeing her 18th birthday. What got me that it was one in 10? Awful number. What was worse than that is that it hadn't changed in 40 years. How can that be true? I thought that survival from cancer was going up year on year. Not so for pancreatic cancer. And it made me look and want to find out more. It felt so unfair. So let's compare with another cancer that has seen a doubling of survival rates in that same window, the window of my lifetime. For every nine people that die of breast cancer, 28 stand to tell their stories. For every nine people that die from pancreatic cancer, one person stands to tell their story. And so I started to look at what this means. And we look at fundraising. We look at research funding. And what you find is it with the number of people that survive. This bar shows research funding in the UK for breast cancer. Just 30% of that on pancreatic. Seems fair by the number of people affected. But what if we don't do it by lives saved, but by lives lost? Then it looks quite different. Then if we compare, what we see is a huge gaping hole of inequity. This is not fair, this is not right, and it can't stay the same. When I speak as a pancreatic cancer survivor, not only do I speak for the nine who didn't make it, I have to speak as loudly as 28 breast cancer survivors if we are to get the same attention, the same funding, the same research, the same chance. It's not that I think breast cancer does not deserve the money. It's that we do too. The thing is that when I speak, I need to speak loudly. It's on us, you and me, because dead people have very quiet voices. There is a perverse irony that the more survivable the cancer, the more survivable the cancer, the more people there are to find the words, the more people there are to make the change. And so what we need to do is come together. There's no other way of getting our share of voice. It's absolutely right and true that we have to move forward together. It's the only way that we will fill that huge gap. What I'm asking you to do today is to join me in doing that extremely loudly. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Brian. You can see I'm going to do a, a physical clap um, because um, we can't hear all the claps. You can see them coming from the pictures there. Um, I think your passion, uh, your emotion, um, and your message to everyone will be is very clearly heard and felt. Um, and thank you so much for talking so openly and candidly and emotionally about um, your experience. And I hope that everyone here feels the same. You've left a lasting impression upon us and um, I hope that we can take that. Uh, many people here have lost their loved ones. Many people have had uh, pancreatic cancer and hearing how you um, have spoken, I would like us to now go on to our next session really, um, uh, where we feel that we use that motivation to think about the World uh, Pancreatic Cancer Day that's coming up this year, where we can really speak loudly, light up the world loudly, and make a difference to improve um, the outcomes for pancreatic cancer for future people being diagnosed and really raise awareness around early detection. Thank um, you, my pleasure.